Hi, so this was inspired by my friend Pete. Now he's an Australian and he's a real problem solver. Actually when I saw this I was so impressed by it I thought hey we've got to redo that really. Uh, and what he did was get a couple of uh, cups and tie them onto a bit of string and don't knock it it worked. And I thought, what would be nice with that is if we made something a bit sturdier and a bit more long-lived and a bit more lab equipment. So what we've got here is actually a balance, and it's really good for measuring small weights. Now, what you do, obviously, is put your weight here, your known weight, and you measure out your unknown weight until the two balance, and then it swings back into this middle position. Now, what he used, and I thought it was amazingly clever, was water. Because, of course, uh, water is really one gram per milliliter. So you can measure down to tiny, tiny amounts using something like a balance. Now, um, this is quite large. It'll measure probably 50 grams or so, somewhere like that. Accuracy, my guess, is 0.1 gram, plus or minus, something round about there. Um, so I constructed this, and we're going to go through the rest of the video on how to construct this. It's quite a large one, but you can build smaller ones and more delicate ones to measure tiny, tiny bits. The key bit, and what I'm taking from Pete, is the idea of using water. Water is effectively a known weight by volume. Pretty much. Good enough for us, anyway. And I thought that was such a cool idea that what we could do with it is construct a balance and get a couple of cups of the same, put them on each side, and then when you balance it again and put water in one, you'll have to add your material to the other cup until they balance. And I just thought that was clever, and that we ought to beef it up a little bit into a bit more of lab equipment style stuff. So this is what I made. Now you'll notice several things about it. These lead weights here, for instance, I used lead, sheet lead, because I've got some. You could use steel, you could use um, car wheel weights, anything really. They hang here so that these pans, which are going to take the actual weight, swing out and are relatively level, and you just keep adding weight until that happens. You'll notice a couple of little strips of lead here, and that's so that I can balance the balance. When I put the whole thing together, it's unbalanced, so sliding these weights up and down the arms get you to a point where it's balanced so when you've balanced the whole thing then you can either put a pencil mark so you know where to go or crimp those weights down because these cups are going to be um, slightly different weights so when you put a cup on and you put another cup on there it's not going to be in balance so sliding those weights will allow you to balance your balance now it's incredibly sensitive any little weight you add on there is going to go out of balance until you add the appropriate approximate weight on the other side when it will go back into balance again and it'll keep doing that until you balance it up. The only trick is having a known weight on one side so you know what the weight of your material is on the other side. Now it's pretty easy to make actually. It's made from something called builder's board which I love. We take off the swinging armature and here is the balance point. It's actually one of these. So one of these is put that way around, and that's a very fine edge, and the whole balance balances on it. Okay, let's go and make one. So here is the builder's board. Now I love this stuff. It's PVC with a foam core. And that means is it's incredibly dimensionally stable. Do anything with it and it stays the way you made it. Machine made, it's got a nice square edge here and here. You can use it as a reference square. And it cuts with just about anything. I haven't tried biting it, but I'm willing to bet you can. But one of the best things to cut it with is this thing, which is just a carpet knife. Cuts beautifully, three or four scores, it will be through there. You can buy this in a whole range of lengths and widths and thicknesses. This one's quite thin and it's just an off cut that I had lying around for this project. So all you really need is one of these, a ruler, a square and a pencil and you can do it with just those basic tools. It doesn't hurt if you have a few more like a drill and a hacksaw, certainly doesn't hurt. Now the first thing we need to do is to mark out the bits and pieces that we need and to cut them out and that's what I'm going to do.
there's all the bits cut out. We've got a base unit and we've got a balance arm with some balance pails and a little indicator here and this is the scrap we've got left over from it. Now the other good thing about this stuff is it sands really, really easily. So we can sand all this and make this look pretty and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some little twiddly bits to make it look pretty. For instance, these uprights here, they'll go there and take the, beam, the balance beam, but they're solid. So I'll probably cut a little hole in there for no reason other than makes it look uh, that it makes it look nice. The balance pans are square. Uh, square's not bad, makes no real difference, but what I'll probably do is cut them out as a disc, because I like circles. The balance arm, which goes on the top of here, incidentally, like that, it's a bit thick and chunky. Doesn't really matter, but I'll probably put, cut out a nice little scroll shape with it to make it pretty, and for no other reason than it makes it pretty. So that's what I'm going to do now, is basically sand this, pretty up a little bit, and when you pretty yours up, just make whatever decisions you want to make about it. And the only thing to remember is not to sand these bits here. These bits are square, because we cut them from the square edge, and they're going to go on this square face. So these uprights, because these have been machine squared, are going to be square, so we don't have such a challenge. Anyway, let's get on and sand. <laughs> That's everything cut out and twiddled up a little bit. So you see, I've drilled some holes, I've cut this in a pretty shape, that sort of thing, okay? The only thing left to do, really, is put it all together. Now, remember, we chose one square edge, which was manufactured, and these need to be in line with each other, otherwise the balance won't work. So all the measurements are taken that square edge. So I've made sure I've got found the center. I've made sure that I know that this is this correct distance. It's three centimeters, so I can line those centers up and line up those marks. Same with the other one here and then they'll be in line. And you'll notice two little marks here and here. And the eagle eyed amongst you will have noticed this bit. This bit goes so that that mark and that mark line up. So that this cut here that I put in this cover carriage is in line. And that'll become obvious in, every, in a minute why. So the only thing left to do really is to glue the whole thing together. And like I say, it glues with this stuff. So let's get gluing. <laughs> And now in order to balance your balance, all you actually do is put it onto the shoe. Oh, incidentally, a couple of other things. I put a little aluminium shoe on there and put a notch in the shoe with a triangular file. And these are just hooks and eyes. And I've crimped these lead weights on. You can use anything really, bits of steel, something like that. In the middle of that shoe, I've put a pencil mark. So I know where the line is. There we go where the line is, and now we need to balance it. It wants to swing that way, you can see it doing it. So if I put my finger in there, and just balance it, and if it won't balance, I slide that little weight. So it's falling this way, the weight needs to slide that way, by a small amount. And then when you've got it balanced, you'll feel it. And I put this board in the middle with some pencil lines on to tell me when it's out of balance and when I'm adding the weight I can actually get nearer to what I want to do. So when it won't balance like that, that's going to be an error. It's very nearly there. There we go. So I had weight here. The needle here that I put in there will shift that way. To bring it back up, I'll be able to add the weight until I can see the needle moving across those marks and it's in line again. Anyway, that's how to make yourself a balance. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.